The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to the Hong Kong Jockey Club and Daily Racing Forum uh, study session for the Sha Tin races coming up this weekend. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornital. Very happy to be back with you, along with my special guest, Paul Lally, who you know from the work he's done uh, on the international feed. He's the form analyst for Racing to Win and a form expert for Hong Kong. Very kind of him to take some time out of uh, his morning, our evening, to talk about these races coming up this weekend. How are you tonight, Paul? Yeah, very good. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, well, pleasure to be here, and uh, hello to everyone that's uh, listening here and through uh, uh, this uh, daily form uh, webinar. And uh, hopefully, we can sort of identify and sort of help to answer any queries you've got, and uh, maybe find a winner or two as well. Absolutely, there is a tool to ask questions during the webinar. If you have specific questions about this card or about Hong Kong racing in general, feel free to ask those. If we have some time at the end, we will get there. We'll eventually be going over the two Group 1 races on this card and also bothering Paul to uh, release a spot play or two. But I wanted to start off a little more generally. Um, and one thing I wanted to ask, throughout the show tonight, we will be sharing these USA-style PPs for Hong Kong, which are available for uh, USA bettors looking to play these races. But I wanted to ask you, Paul, what information source you use uh, when you're studying the form for the Hong Kong races? Yeah, I basically use the Hong Kong Jockey Club website, which is www.hkjc.com. Uh, we've got all the information on there. It's, it's a very, uh, this, you can see it on screen there now, it's, it's a very versatile um, uh, sort of uh, website. It's easy to use with those drop boxes. We've got everything you can imagine on there. You've got the TV programs that we're a part of, but you've also got um, vet records for every horse. You've got daily track work. You can watch every single horse that works every morning. We've got a population of about 1,200 horses here in Hong Kong, just over 1,200. We race on three tracks, um, Sha Tin, which is the main city track, and which is the main track. We've got uh, Heavy Valley, which is a tight city track, and we've also got all weather racing, which you guys be used to over there, which is more of the dirt style as well. But um, the, this meeting is uh, uh, 10 races on the turf. And uh, so we'll be racing at the main chart. And as you can see, that the information, everything is, is there for you with um, you know, sort of the, the current odds. Now, we, we open up our betting for our paramutual uh, lunchtime uh, and local time before the race, the day before the race meeting, and then we start betting from there. So the pools get up to reasonable sizes, uh, 1.6 billion is averaging this year, which is uh, US money is probably about 200,000 uh, US. 200 million, I should say, 200 million US uh, a race meeting. So there's a lot of li liquidity in these particular pools. So there's a lot of interest from sort of syndicates that will use their algorithm models to bet because of the liquidity and uh, the information, sort of getting back to your main question there, the information that we use is, is all on that, uh, you know, you've got race day history from every single runner, every start they've had, all the trials that they do, Every, as I said, every daily track work, which, which I find quite important, and uh, there's stewards' reports from every race, they come under the results. So you can see unlucky runners and everything. So it's just a real wealth of information. Anything you need is there. And our theory here in Hong Kong is we want people to bet, so we want to tell them as much information as we can so they've got the ability to make informed decisions. That's fabulous, and it's something I think that uh, USA punters, we, we have a preponderance of information here, but uh, still not up to the, the standards set by the Hong Kong Jockey Club, and it's something I think USA bettors will appreciate when they spend some time. And I know there are a lot of serious horse players who, because of that liquidity, uh, have been wading into the pools in Hong Kong on more and more of a regular basis. Do you think it's fair to say when you have pool size that big, even if you have some very sharp money coming in in the form of computer syndicates, that punters who are willing to put in the work can still get an edge, can still find a little meat on the bone? Definitely, uh, because, you, you know, the, the, with that so much money in there, there's a lot of sort of, you know, people go to the races here just to have fun. So there's that, what I'd say, sort of uninformed money in the pools as well. So the pool sizes are pretty big. Now, we do have some decent jackpots, uh, which uh, the, we have two... Uh, forms of betting here, the uh, pick six, 
uh, which is the, the winners of the last six races. Uh, and we also have one called the Triple Trio, which is three races, first, second, and third, and in the order. Now, they can jackpot. So we see a lot of people getting involved once that sort of dead money is in that pool. And we can get those uh, those pools up to, you know, significant amounts, eight, eight, 10 million sort of Hong Kong money. So well over a million US. And a lot of people uh, know that with that money that's sort of sitting there, that's when they're, they're willing to sort of unleash the purse strings and have a real go and uh, use those combinations to try and uh, snare that money. So that always creates a lot of interest as well. And all that information about jackpots and everything is right on the website so you know what's going on. But uh, very popular is the, the pick six which is, uh, well, we call it the six up, sorry. So which is the last six winners. Uh, and the concession for that pool is first or second in any race. So if you get six seconds or you get a, a mixture of seconds or first, you can still collect a, a concession pool as well. So it's a, it's a good bet and it, um, it's one of those ones that can keep you going all afternoon. It's that dream scenario for a better, a serious better of any kind when you can have a positive expectation situation often in racing it's the result uh, of a carryover not unlike the one the usa players will be getting involved in at gulfstream park on sunday when there's the mandatory force out of the rainbow six pick six pool the idea is that more money is going to go out of that pool than goes into it and all of a sudden your dollar normally worth uh 80 cents or so in horse racing all of a sudden becomes worth more than a dollar. Do you know, Paul, I didn't prep you for this question, but do you know offhand the, uh, the takeout situation on the, on the Hong Kong races? How much, uh, how much does the house keep? Yeah, it's 14% for the, um, win. It's around, just don't quote me totally on this, but it's around, <laughs> I think around about 14 uh, on the win pool and then it goes up the exotics. So once, the, the exotics are a lot, a little, a little bit higher, but 14, 15 percent is my um, is, is the number I've got in my head. But I'd have to double check that. Sure, we can we can do that. But I mean, uh, that's yeah. uh, that represents a a pretty favorable situation for what a lot of USA betters are used to. Let's move on and talk about these races. Uh, just a, a one programming note: big time difference from the USA. If I'm doing my math correctly. Uh, you are 13 hours ahead of me, which means that the first of these Group 1 races will be happening on my time uh, Saturday night at 3.05 a.m. So this is one for night owls, a little bit easier for folks on the west coast of the United States, but some great opportunities worth uh, staying up for, for sure, or putting in your bets and waking up in the morning and and watching them after the fact. Uh, We're going to start off by talking about... the Centenary Sprint Cup. What are we looking at here, Paul? Okay, so this is a race. It's, it's worth um, $5.7 million, uh, to the winner of Hong Kong. It's a $10 million race over here, which is probably about $1.3 million uh, American dollars. Uh, now, what we've got is it's a great race. In fact, we've got eight runners. Now, of, of these runners, we've had our international races in December where the international horses come in. And we've, we've got uh, the winner, the, the runner-up, and uh, the placings, place horses here that are running and meeting each other again. Now, it's a set weight race. Um, all our group ones are at set weights. And uh, of a field of, we've only got a field of eight, but it's, it's a, a really, really high class. Now, Mr. Stunning uh, sets, uh, is number one. Now, he's rated 130 here in Hong Kong. So that's the highest rated horse in Hong Kong. And he's sort of swept all before in the season. He's had four runs back this season. He's won three of them. Uh, he did fail over a thousand first up when he sort of didn't need to run. He's a he is a twelve hundred meter horse, so six furlong horse did race over five furlongs. The three wins have been very very good indeed. He's a, a, a son of Exceed and Excel, Australian bred horse. Just to give you a background, we've got about a third horse as Australian, third horse as New Zealand, and then we've got a third of sort of rest of the world horses as well. So Mr. Stunning. It's looked really good. He's ridden by Australian jockey. He's based here for Nashua Wooler. Now he's a very strong jockey, uh, very quite tall for a jockey, but very strong. and can get a lot. He can get a lot out of a horse. So Mr. Stunning Storm Barrier Four. He'll start the favourite in the race, and he should get a really nice run from that barrier. He should be sort of in the one-one. He doesn't like to lead. He likes to sort of sit midfield and uh, sort of come with a late run. So he, he'll start the favourite. Now the interesting runners here are. 
uh, is a horse, he's an up and coming horse called DB Pin. He ran second to Mr. Stunning into the international meeting. He did draw wide and he was four or five wide the whole race and, and still ran on really nicely for second. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't have uh, much luck with the barrier gods because he's drawn the outside once again, but it's only eight runner race, so he shouldn't get too much of a bad run. So he's he's actually a stable mate of Mr. Stunning. They're both trained by the champion sire, a champion trainer over here, John Size. So expect um, DB Pin to give him a good fright as, he, as a stable mate. They're both five year olds over here. Uh, DB Pin is a New Zealand bred by uh, Darcy Brahma, and uh, he, he's a horse that. Um, I expect he's sort of the, he's only had the 13 starts for five wins. He's sort of the up and comer. So there were two main John Size horses, uh, which will probably find out favoritism in the race. But the other one is the trainer of one of the local trainers in Francis Lloyd is Lucky Bubbles. And unfortunately for Lucky Bubbles, he doesn't live up to his name because he is one of the most unluckiest runners here in Hong Kong. He always he's one of these horses, as Americans will know, I'm sure you know them yourselves. There's always a horse that has got so much ability but can find trouble on running. Uh, it doesn't matter where he is. And Lucky Bubbles, unfortunately, is one of those uh, horses. He is a Group 1 winner, so he did win his uh, Group 1 uh, last year and uh, back in May. Now, uh, the world's top jockey, Hugh Bowman, uh, at the moment, he's flying over from Australia, especially to ride uh, Lucky Bubbles. And the interesting thing with him is, is they're putting blinkers on him for the first time. Now, as a six-year-old, it's, you know, we normally... The, the horses normally try blinkers well before they're, they're six year old, especially here in Hong Kong. Uh, he's had 20 starts. He's had seven wins, but he's had seven seconds, which tells a tale in itself because he, he's one of these horses that can find trouble on the rails or find trouble uh, coming through and uh, hit the line uh, strongly. And uh, with these blinkers on, it'll be interesting to see if it does focus him up and he, he doesn't find this trouble. He's got barrier five, so he's going to be another main chance. He's the third top rated horse in this particular race. We, we come down to a horse called Blizzard, who's a uh, son of Starcraft, who did Starcraft race in uh, UK, won uh, the Queen Elizabeth over there, I think, as well, and uh, around the world. Uh, he's, a, he's a back runner. Uh, he'll, he'll run on nicely enough in this. He ran third to Mr. Stunning in the International. So Mr. Stunning won the International. Debbie Pin was second and Blizzard was third. So Blizzard, uh, he's the horse that you'll be keeping an eye on late. The fifth, the uh, number five is not listening to me. Now, he's 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 okay over the distance. He's had two wins, but I prefer him over a shorter 1,000 metres. He's had five starts from 30. He'll be one of the outsiders. He's got barrier one, so he's going to get a nice run. He's trained by one of the good trainers here, John Moore. Penny Fobie is the next one. Now, he is an international winner from a couple of years ago. He's a seven-year-old now, and he is getting on a bit, and he is a bit out of form. So he's another one that's going to be an outsider. As we were lucky here, he went over and raced in Korea, in the Group 1 race in Korea. It did fail on the sand over there. It's quite heavy. I don't know if you guys get Korean races there. but We're just uh, starting to. Really, they're starting to? Okay, so the Korean races, it's very deep, deep sand races. So he's he'll be the outside of the field like a year. He hasn't, hasn't come back to form since he went to Korea. I think it took a lot out of him. And the interesting runner for everyone is Beat the Clock. Now, Beat the Clock is... And a stable made of Mr. Stunning and DB Pint. So John Size has got his three handed in the race. Now, Beat the Clock is the young pretender on the box, uh, on the scene. He's a four year old. He's uh, now Joe Barrera, who is our champion jockey here, is elected that, well, he is going to ride and Beat the Clock. Um, so he's got the champion jockey on. He comes in with the lowest rating. So he is out of the handicap in that respect. But he's only had the 11 start for five wins. And he's a very progressive horse. So his questions um, with him, he's coming back from seven furlongs to six furlongs in this particular race. He has raced up to a mile before. He's quite an exciting galloper. I just don't, I think this might have come a little bit too early from myself, but he'll be right in the market to beat the clock uh, because I, uh, the punters love Joe Marrero over here. I'm sure it's the same in America. You've got your jockeys that you like to follow and the, and the punters do like to follow Joe Marrero and he will get a lot of support. But I, find, I think it's going to be very, very hard to beat Mr. Stunning. If you want to go back, you can look on the website, uh, www.hkjc. You can look on the website. You can go back into Mr. Stunning's last run that was the international meeting, and you'll be able to see all these horses. You can just see coming up, Peter's just getting up on screen now. And um, if you click on Mr. Stunning there, you'll see his, um, as he comes up here, you'll be able to see his form records. Uh, 
So we can see that. And if you click on the little uh, picture of a horse on the right hand side, you'll see as this is the international race from uh, December. So you'll be able to see these most of these runners in this race, and you'll see a really good race here from uh, Mr. Stunning, how he managed to, to win uh, this particular contest. So I don't know if you can get up and watch it now, Peter, but. Um, Sometimes it, it doesn't, the video doesn't always appear perfect for everyone watching the webinar, but you can see the wealth of information available here. And I, I recommend folks go back uh, in their own time and, and check out um, some of these video replays. A couple of things to point out just that might be a little uh, slightly confusing for U.S. fans who are looking at the PPs for the first time. The, in the USA, of course, the, the program numbers except in the case of entries, will correlate with the post position, the barrier draw. Not so. The horses here are listed in what I presume is ratings order in a race where all the weights are level. So you'll have to take a look. You can see uh, the number in parentheses right next to the program number. That's going to let you know the post position if you're trying to uh, envision how the race is going to be run beforehand. What kind of a price, Paul, would be fair on Mr. Stunning in this spot? I think he's going to start short um, in this particular. I think he'll probably start about a dollar eighty. So he'll be odds on. He, um, the way he's been winning his races, he'll start about a dollar eighty. I'd say Lucky Bubbles will probably start the second favorite about three fifty. DB pin about four dollars and beat the clock probably about four fifty. I think that's sort of how the market will go. I mean, if Mr. Stunning runs up to his form, he's going to be very hard to beat. He's come out and had a trial since, and um, you can see that on his um, on his track work. If you have a look at that as well, so he, everything is going very very well for for him. And um, he's a really if you, if you are want to go back and have a look through his record, see that we've got it on screen there at the moment. His first ever one win was absolutely amazing to see when he did one at a very tight Happy Valley course, came from well back, got up right on the post and been a specialist there by nose. It's a really, it was a really good run there way back then. But you can see he's, he's pretty consistent horse. Uh, he doesn't sort of run out of the placings too often. Uh, you know, he had a six fresh up, but he did have excuses there. And um, it, it was a fresh up run for him at a group three. Since then, he's come out and won his last three. Now, on this particular screen you're looking at now, there's a click there where you can see track work records, which is uh, under the horse's name at the top. Yep, right there. If you click on that, uh, track work records, it's really good information there for you. Now, you can see in the blue where it says group four, Nashua Willa, Mr. Stunning, 1,050 metres. That's his latest trial. And you can see all his track work there with the times. So they break it down into sectionals there for this. We do it over 400 metres, which is two furlong types. So you can see he's had uh, an 800 metre gallop there, 33.7 and 26.7. So that's, um, you know, like a four furlong gallop. And that's how they mostly train the horses here. They, they go gallop them either uh, two furlongs or four furlongs. So uh, plenty of... Um, information there on the track work side of things for this particular horse it's great now those barrier trials is that like a practice race is that a good way to describe that yeah that, it's just it's a training aid uh this one uh, this one particularly on the 19th of january was on the all-weather track so it was on the dirt so that a lot of the horses they just use it as and the trainers use it as an educational purpose getting the horse to run within the field uh some, some are pushed out but you see a lot of them go to the post under a good hold so it's it's not like a fair dinkum sort of proper full on race. Sorry, fair dinkum is not a try. It's not a full on proper race. It's just a a um, sort of a more of a training aid. But for first starters, in particular, it gives you a good chance to see uh, if they've got ability or not. Very cool. Makes a lot of sense. Let's move on to our other Group One race on the evening. Uh, what's your view in this spot? So this is the this is the really good race because this this is the the mile race that we've got here now. Judy Generation won the international mile. Uh, Helene Perrigan he ran third in this international mile. Now race three we have an international cup race over ten furlongs and time walk a fantastic ride from the Australian jockey Zach Purden led all the way and set up some really fast sectionals and won that. So he's an international winner. Judy Generation's an international winner. Werner was our horse of the year last year, uh, number four, and uh, but he's better over the longer distance. He won the QEQ Cup against the international uh, horses. Well, it was rain effective that day, but he won by five or six lengths. 
and he's very good on top of the ground. He's uh, a horse of the year. He's a derby horse. So he's a very good horse as well. But Beauty Only is uh, same ownership as Beauty Generation, and Beauty Only won the international race two years ago. So he's come tried into to this race. Seasons Bloom was a young up and coming horse. Now he did have blood in the track here after, and it was the favourite for the international race as well because he came into that race leading uh, with some very good form. He's been freshened up for this particular contest, and Joe Marrero will stick with him. So he's um, he's got a, a good chance as well. He'll be he could be close to favourite, I think, past Seasons Bloom. He'll, he's definitely got his uh, followers. The seven, which is Western Express. Now he surprised because there's no good seven furlong horse, six furlong horse, but ran second in the international uh, mile behind Beauty Generation. So there's a lot of form to come out of that particular one. So off the track, he's probably just below the best of his, these milers. Um, John Treasure, now he was a group one winner earlier in the season. He's by Mizzen Mast, who's uh, he's an American bred uh, giant treasure. And he's a big beast. He's a big grey horse who, um, who generally can run well. But he's getting on a bit now, and he has drawn barrier 12 so he's the outs he's going to find it a bit difficult from out there horse of fortune the next one he's a, he's a leader in the race but this will be too strong for him now the real interesting run runner for me is uh the 1150 50. now he does come in here out of the handicap but he is uh one of the up-and-coming horses here in hong kong he said five runs a season for four wins uh he did win one race in new zealand before he got here and was most impressive and then a whole bunch of horses that went on to run very credibly in the New Zealand Derby. He's come over here and he's run very, very well this horse. He's had six starts in his whole career for four wins and a couple of unlucky seconds. So he he's although he's out of the handicap, the potential is there that he could be one of the real stars. So it's interesting to see if has this come a little bit too quick for him or not. He's got barrier 10 to con, uh, contend with as well. He should be a good prize. I think he could be a good each way bet 50 50, to be honest, in this particular contest because with all these sort of uh, stars in there, I think he can give them a bit of a fright. Southern Legend, he bet the uh, last start or two starts ago, he bet a horse called um, Nothing I Like More. Now, Nothing I Like More was the only time he's been beaten, and Nothing I Like More came out and won the group one race on the weekend. Uh, the first leg of what we have is a, a series over three races leading into the derby. And uh, 1600, 1800, so what's that? Seven, eight, uh, a mile, uh, and then we go nine furlongs and then into the 10 furlong derby. And Southern Legend did win fair and square in that situation. He's well over handicap here, but uh, nothing I like more looks very special. And uh, he's uh, they're going to try and clean sweep that series. And Shishwan Da is, is a bit of a throw at the dartboard for Shishwan Da. He's uh, well over handicap as well. So he'll be a big price. But so for me, the real interesting one is Will 50-50 measure up, because this is his best test to date. He did beat, beat the clock, who's the one we talked about in the sprint, over 1,400 metres last start, which is seven furlongs. And now he'll step up to the eight furlongs for the first time. Here's by Syak with Thorn Park, who did win well over a mile in Australia before he got here. And uh, so he is great to, to go over the distance, and his running style suggests the mile is going to be no problem for him whatsoever. But to Beauty Generation, he's a horse who did uh, run a placing in our derby last year. And he's uh, re transformed himself into a miler here in Hong Kong. And he's a front running horse. He's from 13. He'll go straight to the front and try and catch me if you can. The problem being is Time Warp, who did win over the 2000 metres, runs exactly the same style. So there is, a, there is a problem where these two front runners, if they do go at it earlier on, you might be able to, they might set it up for something else. So the big tactics are going to play a lot to play in this particular race. Helene Paragon's been working very well and a very consistent horse. He's a good story, Helene Paragon, because he used to race in Spain, believe it or not, before he came over to Hong Kong. So we've got a lot of horses from uh, different places around the world. So I think Helene Paragon, um, from barrier number two, is going to get a really good run in the race. And he is a... Uh, uh, um, he has won a group one here last season over this distance. Will is a fantastic horse. He's been a great uh, servant here in Hong Kong. I think the mile might be a little bit too short for him unless they go too quick. Beauty only, as I said, won the one last year's uh, international meet, uh, race, and he's been out a bit out of form this season. He's been running on okay. Season's Bloom's the interesting one because he was the the great hope leading into the international meeting and did fail on that occasion. He got well back 
a hit run. He went fourth, so I'm not going to say fail. He, he did. He was expected to win though. Uh, Joe Maria stuck with him, so we'll see how he can go here. He's a five year old from Barrow One, so just from he's going to take. Just from looking at the running line, it looks like it might not have been the smoothest of journeys for Seasons Bloom. At the likely prices, who would you give preference to here? Seasons Bloom or or perhaps 50-50 or is 50-50 more of an each way uh, flyer? How do, you, how do you see the race from a betting perspective? Yeah, from a betting point, Seasons Bloom will start favorite. I'll probably risk him because with Joe Mara, you get a basic hit. You probably have to take slightly unders here and, uh, because a lot of money will go on him. The, the horses, I think the value will be the two, Helene Perrigan uh, from Barrier 2. He's going to get a nice run in the race, and he's been a very consistent horse. And I will take a flyer on 50 50 each way, as you mentioned, because I think he'll pay about $9 or $10. And if he can live up to the promise that he's showing, then, uh, you know, he could be the next uh, sort of horse moving on uh, in Hong Kong. So I'll take a risk on him, but I, I definitely think Helene Perrigan's a winning chance. I'm worried about Beauty Generation and Time Warp taking each other on. So I think if that is the case, then Helene Perrigan will get a nice run just in behind. Caesar's Brown, don't get me wrong, is a very nice horse. But with that blood in the track here last time and being a short price, I, I would risk him. Fair, fair enough. Time is flying in this handicapping session for uh, the weekend racing at Hong Kong. Before we let you go, Paul, I definitely want to get some thoughts from you on other races on this card. Any particular horses you're very excited about betting? You know, get, you give between you know w one and three, whatever you think. Okay, okay. Um, in race one, there's a, uh, a horse train stable could win the same pools. He's in the lowest grade, which is uh, class five here in Hong Kong. He's better than class five. He's won his last two in this grade, and he's won off a lot higher rating before. So you can see there, race one number four. He's with a new trainer here, Frankie Law, and Frankie Law. He's got the best out of this horse since he's changed stables, and I think he'll be very hard to beat. Uh, winner save balls. He's got a local joke at Jockey on Keith Young. Uh, so he should pay about four dollars. So I think he could be a good bet if you want to start off the, the race in race four. I'd skip race two. Race two is a class five distance race. Um, the race three is the real interesting one for me. Now, there's a horse called 8080. If we go to um, the third race, now 8080 is. Gone our favourite, both starts odds on on both occasions, and it's found one better than them uh, both times. Uh, he'll start odds on again, number four, Joe Marrero from Barrier 8, to see him highlight there. I'll take a risk here with a number eight, which is Handsome Bobo. Handsome Bobo has not raced. He's a, he's on debut, but I think there's something special about this horse. He's drawn wide, but he's got a lot of bait speed, so he'll go straight to the front. He's got Zach Burden on, who's out. Uh, second jockey here in Hong Kong, and he's trialed very well. And he's also um, he's his trial's been good, his track work's good. And I think that there's just something about him. If you if you get a chance to go on the website, have a look at some of those trials. He hasn't won any of them, but he hasn't been let go yet. And I, I'm quite excited to see him let go. The trainer Manfred Mann has a good record with, on Hong Kong as first starters. He might start about six dollars. I think you'd be a good bet there. And race number three, we'll take the odds on favour on again. Um, you'll run well, don't get, get me wrong, the odds on favour. You might want to take Savers and Quinellas. Uh, do you call them Quinellas over there? Uh, we the, we have the term. We Typically, you'd say exacta in, in the USA yeah. parlance, but people know people know here a Quinella is just an exacta that's already boxed. In other words, it comes in either direction. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, you might want to take a save that way. But I do like uh, Handsome Bobo. Uh, just we were talking before we started here, Peter, uh, an interesting one for American viewers. In race four, there's a horse called Marquila. Now, Marquila raced in uh, America. He was a, a dirt horse over there. He raced at Golden Gate Field uh, in Pleasanton, for, for people that are listening from that area as well. Uh, it just shows how versatile we are here in Hong Kong. He's only had the six starts in here so far. He hasn't really done too much at this stage, but we'll keep an eye on him. He's by a side Coast Guard, which I'm sure is familiar to, to you guys over there. And um, he's uh, trained by a guy called Jeff Bond before he came here. So the, it just shows you that we get horses from Spain, we get horses from America, USA, and New Zealand. We get horses all around the world. So. Um, a lot of Italian horses come here. But, but if you're having a bit earlier on, I'll be looking at around those two. And, uh, and McCready could be a bit of interest for you guys over there as well. Very Everest good. in this, uh, this particular race is a horse that's uh, got blinkers on for the first time. He, he'll run a little bit better. 
All right, I like it. Thank you so much, Paul, for taking the time out of your morning to come on here and talk a little Hong Kong with us. Hopefully we can do it again soon, make, these, uh, make this a regular segment and talk a little more about generally studying the form and ways that fans can use the Hong Kong Jockey Club website to aid in their form study. I'm sure a lot of USA viewers are they're loving that. The first time starter that you know how to speed. Well, you know that uh, presumably from checking the work tab, watching the barrier trials, and, and using your eye. And, and all of a sudden, you have this valuable piece of knowledge that this first time starter might have enough under the hood to get the job done at a good price. Thank you again for all of your thoughts and your time this morning. No problems, Peter. It's a pleasure and uh, yeah, good punting to everyone as well. And, and enjoy it out there. And uh, look, if you've got any questions about Hong Kong, I'm on uh, Twitter. So if anyone wants to chat on Twitter, or uh, we're always there, we can answer your questions there or or uh, any time. Just you can just look me up on Twitter. It's uh, Paul Lally is my name, and uh, that's Lally Ota, L A L Y O T A. So uh, yeah, more than merit. Very passionate about horse racing over here, so I love talking about it. Fabulous. And maybe we'll have to have you as a guest at some point on the, the DRF Players podcast, which I host as well. Always fun to get a dose of international racing there. All right. That's all the time we have. I want to thank Paul Lally. I want to thank our sponsors, the Hong Kong Jockey Club. I want to thank all my colleagues at Daily Racing Forum. Most of all, I want to thank all of you for tuning in. If you're listening live and came in late and want to check out the whole show, you can catch an archive along with a lot of other great content over at drf.com slash YouTube. We will be back with another show soon. I'm Peter Thomas Fornatal, and you've been watching content produced by drf.com.